to start them off, we've got the students modelling a small scale model of a Spitfire, which is uh, just really to teach them about scale and to help them to understand how to use the software. So it's a small little model, a little, little bit of fun just at the start of the project, just to help uh, students get excited and to create something and understand how the laser cutter works. We get a chance to make something different from other people and it teaches you about history and the actual design of the Spitfire. To decide on the scale, we wanted to be as accurate as we could, so the frames are about an inch thick, so we figured at a 1-7 scale that's about 2 millimetres, which is ideal for the thickness of acrylic. We then had to decide what thickness the frame had to be, uh, and I felt that if it went much thinner than 7 millimetres, which we've got here, which is about 2 inches, if it went much thinner than that, we'd have real problems with the frame snapping. Um, if it went much bigger, then the model would be enormous, we wouldn't be able to handle it. So one to seven seemed to be about the right size to be strong enough to hold itself in shape without being too big and too heavy to, to, to manoeuvre. Well, at the moment we've got year eight in here and they are all working individually on separate frames of the Spitfire um, and all the, the frames eventually will all become together and we can make a whole uh, scale model, a one to seven scale model of the Spitfire. Yeah, this is the, it's really the optimum scale because the length of the plane, it, it will fit through a door just about, it's not too long. And also it won't be too heavy once you make it in acrylic, which was a bit of a worry because it, it's got to support its own weight. Uh, so we are going to cheat a little bit by putting a single piece of acrylic down the centre, which will build the frame around, uh, but it will be clear so you can see the whole frame. Well, I've finished my frame um, for this because everybody has to do an individual frame and I've finished my second. So um, you have to file and export it as a HPGL there. I'm putting it onto the memory stick because we have to um, get it from my computer or everybody else's computers to next door's laser printer. The kids are really good at it. I mean, I would have loved to have done this in year eight. In year 13, I only learned to use to do all this. I still, he could do more than me and he's younger, and I'm, I'm doing it A-level as well. Well, it really gives you a chance to like see how they built the Spitfire in like the World Wars and everything. And you get to make it for yourself, so you're like, given independence to make the whole thing by yourself with a bit of help from Will and all the other members. It should be either straight or almost straight. So this one here, that one is a tiny little bit too far that way. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to work out which of these frames is working, and then we're going to have to go back. We're going to have to go back and sort of measure how far out it is. Go back to the frame drawings and then just alter it that tiny little bit. The issue is, as we look along this edge, all those should line up perfectly. And as you can see, these two are a bit too far in. They need to be there. So somewhere we've got our frame drawing slightly wrong. So we need to go back to the original drawings, just alter these a tiny bit. Well, that's why we're modelling it in card first, so that we're going to make it in acrylic once we know it's spot on. So we put that across. Also, this one here, who, who, did, I don't know who did frame 16? See those corners there? Yeah. They're very sharp, aren't they? So yeah. Let me point that scalpel. So those corners there are very, very sharp. Now, what that would do, that would focus all your stress at that point, and the frame would be likely to snap. So what we need to try and do is to do this and basically smooth everything off so everything's a smooth, a smooth curve. So, which yeah. ones are of these ones around? Well, well, do, well, leave that on the top, just glue it on the bottom again. So you said you wanted a rule? Yeah, let's just get a rule along there. That's now pretty straight, isn't it? Yeah. That's pretty good, is that? I've got lots of small pieces of information that nearly fit. Yeah. So depending on which drawing I use, there's, there's my airplane's slightly short, there. slightly longer. I have a feeling I've got a drawing from different airplanes, right. or slightly different versions, or something's not quite, quite the same. It's Mark 16 in, in the museum, but they just discovered two more Mark 16s apparently. Look where it is at the top. So let's take that one off. No, it's not, it's perfect. But this time, that kind of two millimetres is really important, so you want to put a bit of glue on into those two? We're almost finished. I enjoy making things on the computer and just I just enjoy building like I've always enjoyed Lego and it's just something I'm proud of to make like in front of my dad my dad's into planes and stuff so 
he likes it as well. From when we started, m m many of the kids didn't know um, how to do it as such. We've some people haven't never used this program before, so by doing this, they've learned to use the program. It'll help them through the GCSEs, A levels, life pretty much, and just teaching them simple things. They can go and help other people in the school. They've, they've learned they're going to have something to show for it as well, because building this is fantastic. I mean, I would love to build it, but I'm just a helper at the end of the day, unfortunately. Around here, um, it is a right angle when it should be on the picture, it should be curved, because I've had to make it curvy because it's a stress point in the right angle, and if it was flying, it would basically snap. We're just making sure that we've got all the frames and that we can make a complete fuse large of the of this bit fire. And we're just making sure that everybody's got a key part in the project, really, um, and making sure everyone's efforts are put to good use. Evie, yeah, Evie's doing tw eleven. Ollie's oh, doing twelve. Ollie's doing twelve. Do you write down names by each line? Let me know who's the two. Lucas. Because we're going to need all these files. So we need to adjust them yeah. to make sure they all fit together. I can't remember who was doing that. Way. In the moment we're working in card, and then once everybody's had their frame of the fuselage checked over and double checked it to make sure everything's okay, it'll eventually be cut out in acrylic. Oh, you just, what you've just seen is the computer room which we have just across the corridor where we can do all the CAD work. And then we come into here so we can use a laser cutter uh, because it's noisy, so we put it in a different room. Yeah, we model it in card and it's all going to be cut in card first. And then when we've tweaked everything, everything's perfect, then we'll go straight into acrylic, have a full, very nice looking backboard of the Spitfire and then it should all look very nice in the end. We have to import the file basically into this uh, and we'll, we'll choose frame 18 or another one without that on. So we'll choose this frame 14. The, the, the children themselves have exported them so they've all learned a good software skill really. Set the power. And there we have one of the finished frames. We'll use a scalpel to firstly cut out the inside of the frame and then that'll pop straight out and then we'll use the scalpel again for the outer side of the frame and then we'll have just the actual frame itself and then we can cut that in half and stick it straight onto the Spitfire model and there we are, it's finished. And then it's the same for acrylic as well, we'll just set the speed a bit slower because obviously it's a thicker material. And the kids obviously have learnt a bit how to do it as well. I'm making frame 8, which is the current frame that we're doing now, which is on that computer. So frame 8 is one of the frames that's going to be in the Spitfire. What we're going to have to do, we need to finish off the remaining frames. Okay. We've then got to check that everything lines up correctly. If it does, then we can put those frames in acrylic. Do you want me to draw one out at home? Because I've got the thing at home, like the frames and stuff. Yeah, what, two pieces yeah. up? Go for it. At home, I've got this thing on the VLE, the website, where I can get all the 2D design and the VLE programs at home. So I'm going to go onto the VLE, go onto 2D design and open up the template so I can just copy them out at home and then save them. And it'll save onto my school files. Ah, they're all coming loose. Yeah. They're not bad. It's not a bad fit. We need, we need, we need, yeah, we need to get frame 18 in. Yeah, we'll have to glue those in place. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. It's a laser cutter, so it uses a laser. If you look in there, there should be a pink light, which is the actual laser.
Uh, this is frame 8, which will be going on. That's pretty higher over there. I've made frame 12. Jerry, we're, we're concerned about how we fix the wings. Yeah, the problem we've got is we have no idea exactly how the wings attach and where they attach. The drawings that I've seen either have just the fuselage by itself or just the wings by itself or the wings are all covered up and skinned. So I really need to go and see somewhere which has got a frame so I can see exactly how they attach. I think we should take a small group to Supermarine Engineering. Talk to Mark Harris. You'll see fuselage has been assembled in, in the jail. Uh, and the answer to many of your questions can, can, can be uh, gained on that occasion. Um, I'm yeah. now a student at more than sixth form um, and I studied product design last year with Mr Watson um, and having Mr Watson as, um, as my teacher I was able to get involved with this project through knowing him and he described me what the project was. I, I really want to become a civil engineer. I love engineering, everything about it. I, I really love aerospace engineering. I would love to go into that. So. I'm hoping college goes well. I mean, I do physics, maths, product design, and geology. It's good, techy subjects. After this, I've got a placement at JCB doing a higher apprenticeship. Um, and through them, I'll be able to become more important of the engineering world and, and further a career in engineering, hopefully. It's a great project, really. It's fantastic. And I just thought it would be really interesting and just a really brilliant project to be part of. Uh, I mean, the, the students are embarking on obviously a Spitfire-related task. Um, part of that task is to build a, a full-size cockpit, uh, which may or may not become a simulator. And part of it is to re replicate and reproduce some Spitfire parts in duralumin and, and the actual materials that we use during the, the, well, the original Spitfire. Um, and that gives them opportunity to work with materials and machinery, which they would never normally get the chance to do. Um, and it gets them the, the, the chance to look at drawings and and artefacts that normally would be way, way beyond anything that most, most pupils in a school would ever come near. Well, we started off with these little wooden kits. What we did was we photo put them onto the photocopier, used a programme which vectorised it to make it into a blueprint drawing like these behind me. And what we've done is we've then scaled it up from the original scale to we got it as far as one-sixth of a full-size Spitfire now and we're going to build the whole thing in the, as a gate guard to go to the front of the school. So basically what we had was the actual instrument panel from a Spitfire and then uh, we drew this on 2D design which is a computer program. Um, so after drawing it on 2D design we cut it out using a laser cutter onto laser ply and card. So what we've got at the moment then is a balsa wood model and we've put that into the computer and we're going to start scaling up, so eventually we'll get a 1 1. So at the moment we're on a 1 to 48. Then we'll get a 1 to 36, I think. And then just keep scaling it from there. Most students now are used to doing things using the computer. So where they do what we call CAD CAM. CAD is computer aided design, CAM is computer aided manufacture. Uh, the actual using the machine to do the, the CAM part is called CNC, that's computer numeric control. Um, but what we're asking them to do is to do this by hand. They actually have to manufacture the thing, they have to think for themselves, they've got to work it out, and they have to do all the centering themselves, and, and so on. So it's a much more complicated, much more time-consuming process. Um, but having said that, you know, it, it is very highly skilled. Uh, and one of the, 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 one of the advantages of the, the CNC equipment, obviously, is that a, an unskilled person can use it, and it's all very quick. But unfortunately, along the way, we've lost all the skill that, that we had. I think as a, as a nation, 78 years ago, we must have had some very, very skilled people. Very skilled people. At the moment we are trying to get our design specifications so that we know exactly why we want to go with this project. Whether or not we want a working model, whether or not we want an actual simulator, whether or not we want it to be hydraulic powered, whether or not it's going to be electrical, or whether or not it's just an aesthetic representation of the Spitfire and all the parts that were associated with that aircraft. The challenge for the students is taking a, a drawing which is, was done by hand 70 or 80 years ago um, and converting that uh, firstly away from inches into millimetres um, but then to put it into, into CAD 
go on to CNC, do it with CNC machinery, and, and manufacture the parts using new techniques. Um, when Spitfires were made back all those years ago, it was very much handmade, things were pressed out, uh, things were done with jigs. We, we don't have that technology now, so, um, but we do have the CNC. So if we, can, if we can do it out properly, work out the programming, we can manufacture on a CNC machine, we can get things absolutely dead accurate. Um, the, the difficult thing for the students, I think, is that one of the materials we're using is duralumin, which is a very interesting material, one that's, that's very rare these days. Work hardens and age hardens very, very quickly. Um, most students will have an idea of working in plastics, maybe, or working in timbers, but they'll never have used that material. Um, the, the machinery we have to use it with, obviously the cutting speeds and feeds is totally different. The health and safety involved is different. The tolerances that we were talking about are so tight. Um, and because of the, and when this was originally done, things were done on jigs, of course, it, it more or less all fell into place. Well, now they've got to work out all the centres, they've got to work out all the radii, they've got to do the, the whole thing. And in a drawing, what it doesn't give you is things like when, they, when they're bending a piece of metal, obviously you lose on the bend. So it's no good just drawing a net and then folding it up because you'll find it just doesn't fit. Well, instead of doing a lot of it by hand, we'll be using machines that will probably make some parts of it on a lathe and some will use the laser cutter, but we'll use different materials as well. Like we won't just use MDF, we'll probably model in acrylic and then make some metal parts as well. Not just doing abstract parts, but actually a working machine that's got lots of different aspects, whether it be electrics, airframes, skinning it out, or the aesthetics on the paint job is, is all different sorts of contributions. It's obviously got a lot of history behind it, so you can learn through that, and obviously through all the drawings and stuff, you pick up different skills to reading the older drawings and then modifying them and making new models and parts and stuff. I'm interested in making perhaps it to go in, it's a small little Spitfire engine. Either a wooden mock-up of the engine or a even potentially running. Probably mainly just being able to draw parts of the Spitfire on 2D design because without doing that then you can't obviously make the parts on a laser cutter but if you can draw them on 2D design as well you can also dimension them all and then print them out and use that to make them on a lathe as well which is quite useful. Well fortunately we've got JCB with all their heavy machinery. We will use laser cutters for some parts. Well, one of the things we're finding before we can actually manufacture the parts for this project obviously is we have to teach the students how to do it manually, how to go back and use the equipment and do it the old the old fashioned way. Because I said they're so used to drawing the thing on a computer, they press a button and it either rapid prototypes it or the CNC machine spits it out. So to actually get the hand skills and the manual skills back again it is quite a quite a well, it's quite a task. When we set this up, we, we, uh, we expected to go all, all CAD, CAM and CNC and computer controlled. And yet one of our partners suggested what they really wanted was not that at all. They actually wanted students on machines, on manual machines, to learn the basics before, before they got into programming so they would know whether it was running correctly, whether the feeds were right or the speeds were right and so on. Another one of our partners, uh, although we do lots and lots of CAD, has come back to us and actually said they want drawing boards back out. They want pencil drawings. They want students who when they go out or apprentices when they go out to a site can actually make a sketch on the back of a fag packet or whatever and they've got the information because they have these fantastic CAD systems but if you don't have the fantastic CAD system you can't actually sketch, you can't draw anything. Um, so understanding basic things like measurements has become really important and there's all these skills that we seem to have moved on with technology and we've lost these skills and now we're suddenly discovering that we can't do without them. Well I'm developing skills personally that are going to help me probably later on in life if I go into engineering. Um, they also help me with my work for the engineering diploma and the qualifications that I get. I'm quite interested in aerospace engineering anyway, so hopefully it will give me new skills that I can use if I get a job in aerospace later on. Well, hopefully get me to understand the aer aeronautical aspects of engineering and also the internal combustion engine, which I'm still, I'm still learning about. I think that seeing where we've been is very important to um, create where we're going to be. I think it's fulfilling for the students because it, it brings together some of their heritage. Um, they, they can see something that was used and made this country great and actually, you know, saved the country as it was. Um, they can see how things were done in the past. They can learn new techniques, uh, or old techniques, if you like. Um, 
they, they're manufacturing parts for something which will last for a while. If, if they're manufacturing for a real uh, aeroplane, which some of these development parts are going to be, then that's actually something that's going to be in flight. Uh, it's just a fantastic, fantastic project. And for the staff, it's, it's so good to see where we were, what we were doing, and how we're moving forward. And I think it's very important we don't lose sight of our industrial heritage and our material heritage. Um, because it's very, very easy to just, to just to chase the new, the new, the new all the time. Um, but if you don't know where it came from, it's very difficult then to think, well, where's it going to go to? And one of the things we're trying to do with the students here is to be look at some things and we say, okay, that's where it was, this is where it is, so now in your lifetime, where's it going to be? And this will help them to make that, that kind of a jump, I think. You know, um, a lot of things have been new to them. So all the aircraft parts we deal with today are, are glued together, it's all adhesives. All these things are all riveted. So you've got to get into, well, what's a rivet? How does that work? Well, how does that hold it thing together? So what's the stress? What's the strain? How do you work out how many you're going to use? Instead of just putting a smear of glue down. So it's, there's an awful lot of thought to go into this, an awful lot of thought. And anything that makes the, makes the kids think is worth doing.